An aircraft carrier is a warship with a full-length flight deck and facilities for carrying, arming, deploying, and recovering aircraft, that serves as a seagoing airbase. Typically, it is the capital ship of a fleet, as it allows a naval force to project air power worldwide without depending on local bases for staging aircraft operations. It is extremely expensive to build and important to protect. Aircraft carriers have evolved from converted cruisers to nuclear-powered warships that carry numerous fighter planes, strike aircraft, helicopters, and other types of aircraft. There is no single definition of an aircraft carrier, and modern navies use several variants of the type. These variants are sometimes categorized as sub-types of aircraft carriers, and sometimes as distinct types of aviation-capable ships. Aircraft carriers may be classified according to the type of aircraft they carry and their operational assignments. Admiral Sir Mark Stanhope, former head of the Royal Navy, has said that to put it simply, countries that aspire to strategic international influence have aircraft carriers. Carriers have evolved since their inception in the early 20th century from wooden vessels used to deploy balloons to nuclear-powered warships that carry dozens of aircraft, including fighter jets and helicopters. As of July 17, 2014, there are 37 active aircraft carriers in the world within 12 navies. The United States Navy has 10 large nuclear-powered carriers, known as supercarriers, carrying up to 90 aircraft, the largest carriers in the world. As well as the supercarrier fleet, the U.S. Navy has nine amphibious assault ships used primarily for helicopters. These can also carry up to 25 fighter jets and in some cases are as large as some other nation's fixed-wing carriers. Types of Carrier – Basic Types Amphibious Assault Ship – Anti-Submarine Warfare Carrier – Balloon Carrier and Balloon Tenders – Escort Carrier – Fleet Carrier – Flight Deck Cruiser – Helicopter Carrier – Light Aircraft Carrier – Sea Control Ship – Seaplane Tender and Seaplane Carriers – Super Carrier – Note some of the types listed here are not strictly defined as aircraft carriers by some sources. By role, a fleet carrier is intended to operate with a main fleet and usually provides an offensive capability. These are the largest carriers capable of fast speeds. By comparison, escort carriers were developed to provide defense for convoys of ships. They were smaller and slower with lower numbers of aircraft carried. Most were built from mercantile hulls or in the case of merchant aircraft carriers, were bulk cargo ships with a flight deck added on top. Light aircraft carriers were carriers that were fast enough to operate with a fleet but of smaller size with reduced aircraft capacity. Soviet aircraft carriers now in use by Russia are actually called heavy aviation cruisers. These ships while sized in the range of large fleet carriers were designed to deploy alone or with escorts and provide both strong defensive weaponry and heavy offensive missiles equivalent to a guided missile cruiser in addition to supporting fighters and helicopters. By configuration, there are four main configurations of aircraft carrier in service in the world's navies, divided by the way that aircraft take off and land. Catapult assisted takeoff but arrested recovery. These carriers generally carry the largest, heaviest, and most heavily armed aircraft, although smaller Catobar carriers may have other limitations. Three nations currently operate carriers of this type, ten by the United States, and one each by France and Brazil for a total of twelve in service. Helicopter Carrier Helicopter carriers have a similar appearance to aircraft carriers with regular fixed-wing operations. Some are designed for addition of or may include, a ski jump ramp allowing for future STOVL operations or may have an unused ski jump installed before retirement of STOVL aircraft and rep opposing, in the past conventional carriers were converted and called commando carriers or LPHs. Currently the majority of helicopter carriers but not all are classified as amphibious assault ships. JMSDF has three of this type, the UK-2, France-3. Thailand 1, Republic of Korea 1, and the U.S. 9 for a total of 19. The U.S.'s LHA and LHD class ships do operate a few STOVL aircraft in normal deployment, the UK's illustrious, and the Thai HTMS Shakri Narubit were STOVL aircraft carriers. Short takeoff but arrested recovery, 
these carriers are generally limited to carrying lighter fixed-wing aircraft with more limited payloads. Stobar carrier air wings, such as the Sukhoi Su-33 and future Miquan MiG-29K wings of the Admiral Kstitsov are often geared primarily towards air superiority and fleet defense roles rather than strike power projection tasks, which require heavier payloads. Currently, Russia, China, and India possess commissioned carriers of this type. Short takeoff vertical landing, limited to carrying STOVL aircraft. STOVL aircraft, such as the Harrier jump jet family and Yakovlev Yak-38 generally have very limited payloads, lower performance, and high fuel consumption when compared with conventional fixed-wing aircraft. However, a new generation of STOVL aircraft, currently consisting of the F-35B has much improved performance. This type of aircraft carrier is in service with one for India and two for Italy. Spain also operates one amphibious assault ship as a STOVL aircraft carrier for four ships total in active carrier service. The UK and Thailand each have one active STOVL carrier but both no longer have any operational STOVL aircraft in inventory. Some also count the nine U.S. amphibious assault ships in their secondary light carrier role boosting the overall total to 15. By size, supercarrier, fleet carrier, light aircraft carrier, escort carrier, hull type identification symbols, several systems of identification symbol for aircraft carriers and related types of ship have been used. These include the pennant numbers used by the British Royal Navy and some Commonwealth countries the U.S. hull classification symbols also used by NATO and some other countries, and the Canadian hull classification symbols. History Origins The 1903 advent of heavier-than-air fixed-wing aircraft was closely followed in 1910 by the first experimental takeoff of an airplane, made from the deck of a United States Navy vessel, and the first experimental landings were conducted in 1911. On May 9, 1912 the first airplane takeoff from a ship underway was made from the deck of the British Royal Navy's HMSA Hibernia. Seaplane tender support ships came next, with the French founder of 1911. In September 1914 the Imperial Japanese Navy Wakamura conducted the world's first successful ship-launched air raid. On September 6, 1914 a Farman aircraft launched by Wakamia attacked the Austro-Hungarian cruiser Kaiserin Elizabeth and the German gunboat Jaguar Inca at Sobey off Tsingtai. Neither was hit. The development of flat-top vessels produced the first large fleet ships. In 1918, HMSA Argus became the world's first carrier capable of launching and recovering naval aircraft. As a result of the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922, which limited the construction of new heavy surface combat ships, most early aircraft carriers were conversions of ships that were laid down as different ship types, cargo ships, cruisers, battle cruisers, or battleships. These conversions gave rise to Lexington-class aircraft carriers, a Kaji and Courageous class. Specialist carrier evolution was well underway with several navies ordering and building warships that were purposefully designed to function as aircraft carriers by the mid-1920s, resulting in the commissioning of ships such as Hasha, HMSA Hermes, and Bar Copyright Arn. During World War II, these ships would become the backbone of the carrier forces of the United States, British, and Japanese navies, known as fleet carriers. World War II the aircraft carrier dramatically changed naval combat in World War II, because air power was becoming a significant factor in warfare. The advent of aircraft as focal weapons was driven by the superior range, flexibility and effectiveness of carrier-launched aircraft. They had higher range and precision than naval guns, making them highly effective. The versatility of the carrier was demonstrated in November 1940 when HMSA Illustrious launched a long-range strike on the Italian fleet at their base in Toronto, signaling the beginning of the effective and highly mobile aircraft strikes. This operation incapacitated three of the six battleships at a cost of two torpedo bombers. World War II in the Pacific Ocean involved clashes between aircraft carrier fleets. The 1941 Japanese surprise attack on Pearl Harbor was a clear illustration of the power projection capability afforded by a large force of modern carriers. 
concentrating six carriers in a single unit turned naval history about, as no other nation had fielded anything comparable. However, the vulnerability of carriers compared to traditional battleships when forced into a gun range encounter was quickly illustrated by the sinking of HMS Glorious by German battlecruisers during the Norwegian campaign in 1940. This newfound importance of naval aviation forced nations to create a number of carriers, in efforts to provide air superiority cover for every major fleet in order to ward off enemy aircraft. This extensive usage required the construction of several new light carriers. Escort aircraft carriers, such as Asabogu, were sometimes purpose-built, but most were converted from merchant ships as a stopgap measure to provide anti-submarine air support for convoys and amphibious invasions. Following this concept, light aircraft carriers built by the U.S., such as Asa Independence, represented a larger, more militarized version of the escort carrier. Although with similar complement to escort carriers, they had the advantage of speed from their converted cruiser hulls. The UK 1942 design light fleet carrier was designed for building quickly by civilian shipyards and with an expected service life of about three years. They served the Royal Navy during the war and was the hull design chosen for nearly all aircraft carrier-equipped navies after the war until the 1980s. Emergencies also spurred the creation or conversion of highly unconventional aircraft carriers. CAM ships, were cargo-carrying merchant ships that could launch a single fighter aircraft from a catapult to defend the convoy from long-range German aircraft. Post-war era. Before World War II, international naval treaties of 1922, 1930 and 1936 limited the size of capital ships including carriers. Since World War II, Aircraft carrier designs have increased in size to accommodate a steady increase in aircraft size. The large, modern Nemitsa class of U.S. carriers has a displacement nearly four times that of the World War Era Euro era USA enterprise, yet its complement of aircraft is roughly the same year Euro a consequence of the steadily increasing size and weight of military aircraft over the years. Today's aircraft carriers are so expensive that nations which operate them risk significant political, economic, and military impact if a carrier is lost, or even used in conflict. Modern navies that operate such aircraft carriers treat them as the capital ship of the fleet, a role previously held by the battleship. This change took place during World War II in response to air power becoming a significant factor in warfare, driven by the superior range, flexibility and effectiveness of carrier-launched aircraft. Following the war, Carrier operations continued to increase in size and importance. Supercarriers, displacing 75,000 tons or greater, have become the pinnacle of carrier development. Some are powered by nuclear reactors and form the core of a fleet designed to operate far from home. Amphibious assault ships, such as Asatarawa and HMSA Ocean, serve the purpose of carrying and landing marines, and operate a large contingent of helicopters for that purpose. Also known as commando carriers, or helicopter carriers, many have the capability to operate BSTOL aircraft. Lacking the firepower of other warships, carriers by themselves are considered vulnerable to attack by other ships, aircraft, submarines, or missiles. Therefore, an aircraft carrier is generally accompanied by a number of other ships to provide protection for the relatively unwieldy carrier, to carry supplies and perform other support services and to provide additional offensive capabilities. The resulting group of ships is often termed a battle group, carrier group, or carrier battle group. There is a view that modern anti-ship weapons systems, such as torpedoes and missiles, have made aircraft carriers obsolete as too vulnerable for modern combat. On the other hand, the threatening role of aircraft carriers has a place in modern asymmetric warfare, like the gunboat diplomacy of the past. Furthermore, aircraft carriers facilitate quick and precise projections of overwhelming military power into such local and regional conflicts. Aircraft carriers in service. Most navies only operate one or two aircraft carriers, if any. The USA is a notable exception, having large numbers in service. A total of 20 fleet carriers are in active service with 10 navies. Additionally, the navies of Australia, Brazil, China, France, India, Italy, 
Japan, South Korea, Spain, Thailand, the United Kingdom, and the United States also operate ships capable of carrying and operating multiple helicopters and STOVL aircraft. Cato bar types are operated by Brazil, France and especially the USA, which has 10 in service. Stobar type are operated by China, India and Russia. STOVL types are operated by India, Italy, Spain and the USA. Among helicopter-only types, ASW ships are operated by Japan. An offshore helicopter support ship is operated by Thailand. Amphibious assault ships are operated by France, the Republic of Korea, the United Kingdom and especially the USA, which has nine in service. The future of aircraft carriers, a good many aircraft carriers and related types are planned, under construction or undergoing commissioning activity. The Australian Canberra class landing helicopter dock is based on the Spanish Juan Carlos I, and is the largest type of ship ever built for the Royal Australian Navy. The Australian version retains the ski ramp from the Juan Carlos I leaving upgrade potential for future fixed-wing carrier operations capability. Two are due to enter service between 2014 and 2016. In December 2009, then Indian Navy Chief Admiral Nirmal Kumar Verma said at his maiden Navy Week press conference that concepts currently being examined by the Directorate of Naval Design for the second indigenous aircraft carrier, are for a conventionally powered carrier displacing over 50,000 tons and equipped with steam catapults to launch fourth-generation aircraft. Later on in August 2013 Vice Admiral R. K. Dowen, while talking about the detailed study underway on the IACII project, said that nuclear propulsion was also being considered. The Navy also evaluated the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, which is being used by the U.S. Navy in their latest Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carriers. General Atomics, the developer of the EMALS was cleared by the U.S. government to give a technical demonstration to Indian Navy officers, who were impressed by the new capabilities of the system. The EMALS enables launching varied aircraft including unmanned combat air vehicles. The aim is to have a total of three aircraft carriers in service, with two fully operational carriers and the third in refit. In August 2013, a launching ceremony for Japan's largest military ship since World War II was held in Yokohama. The 820-foot-long, 19,500-ton flat-top destroyer Izumo will be deployed in March 2015. The ship will be able to carry up to 14 helicopters. However, only seven ASW helicopters and two Saudi Reels helicopters are planned for the initial aircraft complement. For other operations, 400 troops and 53.5T trucks can also be carried. The flight deck has five helicopter landing spots that allow simultaneous landings or takeoffs. The ship is equipped with two Phalanx CIWS and two C RAM for its defense. The destroyers of this class were initially intended to replace the two ships of the Shirane class, which were originally scheduled to begin decommissioning in FY 2014. Speaking in St. Petersburg, Russia on June 30, 2011, the head of Russia's United Shipbuilding Corporation said his company expected to begin design work for a new carrier in 2016, with the goal of beginning construction in 2018 and having the carrier achieve initial operational capability by 2023. Several months later, on November 3, 2011 the Russian newspaper Izvstia reported that the naval building plan now included the construction of a new shipyard capable of building large hull ships, after which Moscow will build two, 80 tons full load each, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers by 2027. The spokesperson said one carrier would be assigned to the Russian Navy's northern fleet at Murmansk, and the second would be stationed with the Pacific fleet at Vladivostok. The Republic of Korea Navy believes it can deploy two light aircraft carriers by 2036 and expand its blue water force to cope with the rapid naval buildups of China and Japan, according to a Navy source. The British Royal Navy is constructing two new larger STOVL aircraft carriers, the Queen Elizabeth class, to replace the three Invincible class carriers. The ships will be named HMSA Queen Elizabeth and HMSA Prince of Wales. They will be able to operate up to 40 aircraft, 
and will have a displacement of 70,600 tons. The ships are due to become operational from 2020. Their primary aircraft complement will be made up of F-35B Lightning IIs, and their ship's company will number around 680 with the total complement rising to about 1600 when the air group is embarked. Defensive weapons will include the Phalanx Close-In Weapon System for anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense. Also 30mm automated small-caliber guns and miniguns for use against fast attack craft. The two ships will be the largest warships ever built for the Royal Navy. The current U.S. fleet of Nimitz-class carriers will be followed into service by the Gerald R. Ford class. It is expected that the ships will be more automated in an effort to reduce the amount of funding required to maintain and operate its supercarriers. The main new features are implementation of electromagnetic aircraft launch system and unmanned aerial vehicles. With the deactivation of the USA Enterprise in December 2012, the U.S. fleet comprises 10 supercarriers. On July 24, 2007, the House Armed Services Sea Power Subcommittee recommended seven or eight new carriers. However, the debate has deepened over budgeting for the $12 a euro $14.5 billion for the 100,000-ton Gerald R. Ford class carrier compared to the smaller $2 a billion 45,000-ton America class amphibious assault ships able to deploy squadrons of F-35B of which two are already under construction and 12 are planned. Description, Structure Carriers are large and long ships, although there is a high degree of variation depending on their intended role and aircraft complement. The size of the carrier has varied over history and among navies, to cater to the various roles that global climates have demanded from naval aviation. Regardless of size, the ship itself must house their complement of aircraft, with space for launching, storing, and maintaining them. Space is also required for the large crew, supplies, and propulsion. U.S. supercarriers are notable for having nuclear reactors powering their systems and propulsion. This makes the carrier reasonably tall. The top of the carrier is the flight deck, where aircraft are launched and recovered. On the starboard side of this is the island, where air traffic control and the bridge are located. The constraints of constructing a flight deck affect the role of a given carrier strongly, as they influence the weight, type and configuration of the aircraft that may be launched. For example, assisted launch mechanisms are used primarily for heavy aircraft, especially those loaded with air-to-ground weapons. Cato bar is most commonly used on USN supercarriers as it allows the deployment of heavy jets with full loadouts, especially on ground attack missions. STOVL is used by other navies because it is cheaper to operate and still provides good deployment capability for fighter aircraft. Due to the busy nature of the flight deck, only 20 or so aircraft may be on it at any one time. A hangar storage several decks below the flight deck is where most aircraft are kept, and aircraft are taken from the lower storage decks to the flight deck through the use of an elevator. The hangar is usually quite large and can take up several decks of vertical space. Munitions are commonly stored on the lower decks because they are highly explosive should the compartment they are in be breached. Usually this is below the water line so that the area can be flooded in case of emergency. Flight Deck As runways at sea, aircraft carriers have a flat-top flight deck, which launches and recovers aircraft. Aircraft launch forward, into the wind, and are recovered from astern. The flight deck is where the most notable differences between a carrier and a land runway are found. Creating such a surface at sea poses constraints on the carrier a euro for example, the fact that it is a ship means that a full-length runway would be costly to construct and maintain. This affects takeoff procedure, as a shorter runway length of the deck requires that aircraft accelerate more quickly to gain lift. This either requires a thrust boost, a vertical component to its velocity, or a reduced takeoff load. The differing types of deck configuration, as above, influence the structure of the flight deck. The form of launch assistance a carrier provides is strongly related to the types of aircraft embarked and the design of the carrier itself. There are two main philosophies in order to keep the deck short, add thrust to the aircraft, such as using a catapult-assisted takeoff, and changing the direction of the airplane's thrust, as in vertical and or short takeoff. 
Each method has advantages and disadvantages of its own, catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, a steam-powered catapult is connected to the aircraft, and is used to accelerate conventional aircraft to a safe flying speed. By the end of the catapult stroke, the aircraft is airborne and further propulsion is provided by its own engines. This is the most expensive method as it requires complex machinery to be installed under the flight deck, but allows for even heavily loaded aircraft to take off. Short takeoff but arrested recovery depends on increasing the net lift on the aircraft. Aircraft do not require catapult assistance for takeoff. Instead on nearly all ships of this type an upwards vector is provided by a ski jump at the forward end of the flight deck, often combined with thrust vectoring by the aircraft. Alternatively, by reducing the fuel and weapon load, an aircraft is able to reach faster speeds and generate more upwards lift and launch without a ski jump or catapult. Short takeoff vertical landing, on aircraft carriers, non-catapult assisted, fixed wing short takeoffs are accomplished with the use of thrust vectoring, which may also be used in conjunction with a runway ski jump. Use of STOVL tends to allow aircraft to carry a larger payload as compared to during VTOL use, while still only requiring a short runway. The most famous examples are the Hawker Sidley Harrier and the Sea Harrier. Although technically VTOL aircraft, they are operationally STOVL aircraft due to the extra weight carried at takeoff for fuel and armaments. The same is true of the F 35B Lightning II which demonstrated VTOL capability in test flights but is operationally STOVL, vertical takeoff and landing, aircraft are specifically designed for the purpose of using very high degrees of thrust vectoring, but are usually slower than conventionally propelled aircraft. On the recovery side of the flight deck, the adaptation to the aircraft loadout is mirrored. Non-VTOL or conventional aircraft cannot decelerate on their own, and almost all carriers using them must have arrested recovery systems to recover their aircraft. Aircraft that are landing extend a tail hook that catches on arrest a wires stretched across the deck to bring themselves to a stop in a short distance. Post WWII Royal Navy research on safer cat bar recovery eventually led to universal adoption of a landing area angled off axis to allow aircraft who miss the arresting wires to bolt and safely return to flight for another landing attempt rather than crashing into aircraft on the forward deck. If the aircraft are VTOL capable or helicopters, they do not need to decelerate and hence there is no such need. The arrested recovery system has used an angled deck since the 1950s because, in case the aircraft does not catch the arresting wire, the short deck allows easier takeoff by reducing the number of objects between the aircraft and the end of the runway. It also has the advantage of separating the recovery operation area from the launch area. Helicopters and aircraft capable of vertical or short takeoff and landing usually recover by coming abreast the carrier on the port side and then using their hover capability to move over the flight deck and land vertically without the need for arresting gear. Staff and Deck Operations Carriers steam at speed up to 35 knots into the wind during flight deck operations to increase wind speed over the deck to a safe minimum. This increase in effective wind speed provides a higher launch airspeed for aircraft at the end of the catapult stroke or ski jump, as well as making recovery safer by reducing the difference between the relative speeds of the aircraft and ship. Since the early 1950s on conventional carriers it has been the practice to recover aircraft at an angle to port of the axial line of the ship. The primary function of this angled deck is to allow aircraft that miss the arresting wires, referred to as a bolter, to become airborne again without the risk of hitting aircraft parked forward. The angled deck allows the installation of one or two waste catapults in addition to the two bow cats. An angled deck also improves launch and recovery cycle flexibility with the option of simultaneous launching and recovery of aircraft. Conventional aircraft rely upon a landing signal officer to monitor the aircraft's approach, visually gauge glide slope, attitude, and air speed, and transmit that data to the pilot. Before the angled deck emerged in the 1950s, LSOs used colored paddles to signal corrections to the pilot. From the late 1950s onward, visual landing aids such as optical landing system have provided information on proper glide slope, 
but LSOs still transmit voice calls to approaching pilots by radio. Key personnel involved in the flight deck include the shooters, the handler, and the air boss. Shooters are naval aviators or naval flight officers and are responsible for launching aircraft. The handler works just inside the island from the flight deck and is responsible for the movement of aircraft before launching and after recovery. The air boss occupies the top bridge and has the overall responsibility for controlling launch, recovery and those aircraft in the air near the ship, and the movement of planes on the flight deck, which itself resembles a well-choreographed ballet. The captain of the ship spends most of his time one level below primary on the navigation bridge. Below this is the flag bridge, designated for the embarked admiral and his staff. To facilitate working on the flight deck of a U.S. aircraft carrier, the sailors wear colored shirts that designate their responsibilities. There are at least seven different colors worn by flight deck personnel for modern United States Navy carrier air operations. Carrier operations of other nations use similar color schemes. Deck structures. The superstructure of a carrier are concentrated to the starboard side of the deck in a relatively small area called an island, a feature pioneered on the HMSA Hermes in 1923. Very few carriers have been designed or built without an island. The flush deck configuration proved to have significant drawbacks, primary of which was management of the exhaust from the power plant. Fumes coming across the deck were a major issue in the Usalanglia, CV-1. In addition, lack of an island meant difficulties managing the flight deck, performing air traffic control, a lack of radar housing placements and problems with navigating and controlling the ship itself. Another deck structure that can be seen is a ski jump ramp at the forward end of the flight deck. This was first developed to help launch STOVL aircraft take off at far higher weights than is possible with a vertical or rolling takeoff on flat decks. Originally developed by the Royal Navy, it since has been adopted by many navies for smaller carriers. A ski jump ramp works by converting some of the forward rolling movement of the aircraft into vertical velocity and is sometimes combined with the aiming of jet thrust partly downwards. This allows heavily loaded and fueled aircraft a few more precious seconds to attain sufficient air velocity and lift to sustain normal flight. Without a ski jump launching fully loaded and fueled aircraft such as the Harrier would not be possible on a smaller flat deck ship before either stalling out or crashing directly into the sea. Although STOVL aircraft are capable of taking off vertically from a spot on the deck, using the ramp and a running start is far more fuel efficient and permits a heavier launch weight. As catapults are unnecessary, carriers with this arrangement reduce weight, complexity, and space needed for complex steam or electromagnetic launching equipment. Vertical landing aircraft also remove the need for arresting cables and related hardware. Russian, Chinese, and future Indian carriers include a ski jump ramp for launching lightly loaded conventional fighter aircraft but recover using traditional carrier arresting cables and a tail look on their aircraft. The disadvantage of the ski jump is the penalty it exacts on aircraft size, payload, and fuel load. Heavily laden aircraft cannot launch using a ski jump because their high loaded weight requires either a longer takeoff roll than is possible on a carrier deck or assistance from a catapult or JATO rocket. For example the Russian Su-33 is only able to launch from the carrier of with a minimal armament and fuel load. Another disadvantage is on mixed flight deck operations where helicopters are also present such as a U.S. landing helicopter dock or landing helicopter assault amphibious assault ship a ski jump is not included as this would eliminate one or more helicopter landing areas. This flat deck limits the loading of harriers but is somewhat mitigated by the longer rolling start provided by a long flight deck compared to many STOVL carriers. National Fleets A total of 20 fleet carriers are in active service with 10 navies. Additionally, the navies of Australia, Brazil, China, France, India, Italy, Japan, South Korea, Spain, Thailand, the United Kingdom and the United States also operate ships capable of carrying and operating multiple helicopters and STOVL aircraft. Australia Future, the Canberra class of landing helicopter docks, based on the Spanish vessel Juan Carlos I, are currently under construction, 
intended to enter service between 2014 and 2016. The class is being built by Navantia and BAE Systems Australia. And HMAS Canberra is the largest ship ever built for the Royal Australian Navy. Canberra underwent sea trials in late 2013 and is to be commissioned in early 2014, while HMAS Adelaide is expected to enter service in 2016. The Australian version retains the ski ramp from the Juan Carlos I design, although the RAN has not acquired carrier-based fixed-wing aircraft. Brazil. Current, one Cato bar carrier, Nazar Pound Paulo is a Clemenceau-class aircraft carrier currently in service with the Brazilian Navy. The Zar Pound Paulo was first commissioned in 1963 by the French Navy as the Foch and was transferred in 2000 to Brazil, where she became the new flagship of the Brazilian Navy. During the period from 2005 to Euro 2010, the Zar Pound Paulo underwent extensive modernization. At the end of 2010, sea trials began, and as of 2011 the Zar Pound Paulo had been evaluated by the CIASA. She was expected to rejoin the fleet in late 2013, but suffered another major fire in 2012. China Current, one Stobar carrier, the Lioning was originally built as the 57,000-ton Soviet of class carrier Varyag and was later purchased as a stripped hulk by China in 1998 on the pretext of use as a floating casino, then partially rebuilt and towed to China for completion. The Lioning was commissioned on September 25, 2012, and began service for testing and training. On 24 or 25 November 2012, Lioning successfully launched and recovered several Shenyang J-15 jet fighter aircraft. She is classified as a training ship, intended to allow the Navy to practice with carrier usage. On December 26, 2012, the People's Daily reported that it will take four to five years for the Lioning to reach full capacity, mainly due to training and coordination which will take significant amount of time for Chinese PLA Navy to complete as this is the first aircraft carrier in their possession. As it is a training ship, Lioning is not assigned to any of China's operation fleets. France Current, one Cato bar carrier, Charles de Gaulle is a 42,000-ton nuclear-powered aircraft carrier commissioned in 2001 and is the flagship of the French Navy. The ship carries a complement of Dassault Breguet Super Permel Tendered, Dassault Rafale M and A Euro 2C Hawkeye aircraft, EC-725 Caracal and AS-532 Cougar helicopter for combat search and rescue, as well as modern electronics and Aster missiles. It is a Cato bar type carrier that uses 275 AMC 13 A Euro 3 steam catapults of a shorter version of the catapult system installed on the U.S. Nimitz class carriers, one catapult at the bow and one across the front of the landing area. Three amphibious assault ships, Mistral class, 21,500 ton full deck amphibious assault ships with hospital and well deck. India. Current, one Stobar carrier. Insa Vikramaditya, 45,400 tons, modified Kiev class. The carrier was purchased by India on January 20, 2004 after years of negotiations at a final price of $2.35 billion. The ship successfully completed her sea trials in July 2013 and aviation trials in September 2013. She was formally commissioned on November 16, 2013 at a ceremony held at Severodvinsk. Russia. One STOVL carrier, Insa Virort, 28,700 ton ex British STOVL converted carrier HMSA Hermes, purchased in 1986 and commissioned in 1987, scheduled to be decommissioned in 2019. Future, India started the construction of a 40,000 ton, 260 metre long Vikant class aircraft carrier in 2009. The new carrier will cost 762 US dollars a million and will operate MiG 29K, Naval HAL Tejas, and Sea Harrier aircraft along with the Indian made helicopter HAL DHRUV. The ship will be powered by four gas turbine engines and will have a range of 8,000 nautical miles, carrying 160 officers, 1,400 sailors, and 30 aircraft. The carrier is being constructed by Cochin Shipyard.
The ship was launched in August 2013 and is scheduled for commissioning in 2018. Italy. Current, 2 STOVL carriers, Giuseppe Garibaldi, 14,000 ton Italian STOVL carrier, commissioned in 1985. Caver, 27,000 ton Italian STOVL carrier designed and built with secondary amphibious assault facilities, commissioned in 2008. Japan. Current, two helicopter carrier ships, Hayagar class helicopter destroyer 19,000 tons anti submarine warfare carrier with enhanced command and control capabilities allowing them to serve as fleet flagships. Both ships in the class are being refitted with heat resistance for the future F 35 BSTOVL deployments. Future, in August 2013, a launching ceremony for Japan's largest military ship since World War II is held in Yokohama on Tuesday, 6 August. The 820 foot long, 19,500 tons flat top destroyer Izumo will be deployed in March 2015. Russia. Current. One Stobar carrier, Admiral Flota Sovetskovo Shoyuza Kstsev, 55,000 ton Kstsev class Stobar aircraft carrier. Launched in 1985 as Tbilisi, renamed and operational from 1995. Without catapults she can launch and recover lightly fueled naval fighters for air defense or anti-ship missions but not heavy conventional bombing strikes. Officially designated an aircraft carrying cruiser. She is unique in carrying a heavy cruiser's complement of defensive weapons and large P-700 granite defensive missiles. The P-700 systems will be removed in the coming refit to enlarge her below-decks aviation facilities as well as upgrading her defensive systems. Spain, current, 1 STOVL carrier, Juan Carlos 1, 27,000 ton. Specially designed multi-purpose strategic projection ship which can operate as an amphibious assault ship or STOVL carrier depending on mission requirement, has full facilities for both functions including a ski jump ramp, well deck, and vehicle storage area which can be used as additional hangar space, launched in 2008, commissioned September 30, 2010. South Korea. Current. One Dokdo class amphibious assault ship 18,860 ton full deck amphibious assault ship with hospital and well deck and facilities to serve as fleet flagship. Thailand, current, one offshore helicopter support ship, HTMS Shakri Narubit helicopter carrier, 11,400 ton STOVL carrier based on Spanish PRA and CIPED Asturias design. Commissioned in 1997. The Avenue 8S Matador Harrier STOVL fighter wing, mostly inoperable by 1999, was retired from service without replacement in 2006. Ship now used for Royal Transport, helicopter operations, and as a disaster relief platform. United Kingdom. Current, two amphibious assault ships, HMSA Illustrious, 22,000 ton STOVL Invincible class carrier. Commissioned in 1982. Originally there were three of her class but the other two have since been retired and recycled to save money. Fixed-wing aircraft carrier operations ended after first Sea Harrier and then RAFRN Joint Force Harrier 2 aircraft were retired by the UK as a cost-saving measure in 2010, now operating as a landing platform helicopter until Ocean is out of refit in 2014 and then to be preserved as a memorial. HMS Ocean Amphibious Assault Ship 21,750-ton full-deck amphibious assault ship based on the Invincible-class aircraft carrier hull but without facilities for fixed-wing aviation. Future, the Royal Navy is constructing two new larger STOVL aircraft carriers, the Queen Elizabeth-class, to replace the three Invincible-class carriers. The ships are the HMSA Queen Elizabeth and the HMSA Prince of Wales. They will be able to operate up to 40 aircraft, and will have a displacement of 70,600 tons. The ships are due to become operational from 2020. Their primary aircraft complement will be made up of F-35B Lightning IIs, and their ship's company will number around 680 with the total complement rising to about 1600 when the air group is embarked. The two ships will be the largest warships ever built for the Royal Navy. United States. Current, 10 Katobar carriers, Namitsa class, 
10 101,000 ton nuclear powered supercarriers, the first of which was commissioned in 1975. A Nimitz class carrier is powered by two nuclear reactors and four steam turbines and is 1,092 feet long. Nine amphibious assault ships, Tororo class a class of 40,000 ton amphibious assault ships, of which one, Usapaleliwa, LHA 5, remains in service. Ships of this class have been used in wartime in their secondary mission as a light carriers with 20 AV-8B Harrier II aircraft after unloading their marine expeditionary unit. Scheduled to be decommissioned in 2014 and replaced by the 45,000 ton USS America. WASP the class a class of eight 41,000 ton amphibious assault ships, members of this class have been used in wartime in their secondary mission as light carriers in the with 20 to 25 AV-8BS after unloading their marine expeditionary unit. Future, the current U.S. fleet of Nimitz class carriers will be followed into service by the Gerald R. Ford class. It is expected that the ships will be more automated in an effort to reduce the amount of funding required to maintain and operate its supercarriers. The main new features are implementation of electromagnetic aircraft launch system and unmanned aerial vehicles. With the deactivation of the USA Enterprise in December 2012, the U.S. fleet comprises 10 supercarriers. The House Armed Services Sea Power Subcommittee on July 24, 2007, recommended seven or maybe eight new carriers. However, the debate has deepened over budgeting for the $12 a euro 14.5 billion for the 100,000 ton Gerald R. Ford class carrier compared to the smaller $2 a billion 45,000 ton America class amphibious assault ships able to deploy squadrons of F 35B, of which two are already under construction and 12 are planned. See also Carrier based aircraft, Project Habakkuk. Siege 1, Mobile Offshore Base, Unsinkable Aircraft Carrier, Airborne Aircraft Carrier, Submarine Aircraft Carrier, Related Lists, List of Aircraft Carriers, List of Aircraft Carriers by Configuration, List of Sunken Aircraft Carriers, List of Amphibious Warfare Ships, Number of Warships and Service Worldwide, References. Further reading External links, Future Aircraft Carrier, UK Armed Forces International, Aircraft Carriers of the USN, Info about Flight Deck Crew, Arresting Cables, Catapults, How Stuff Works A Euro Aircraft Carriers, Haze Gray and Underway, World Aircraft Carrier Lists Comprehensive and Detailed Listings of All the World's Aircraft Carriers and Seaplane Tenders from 1913 to 2001, with Photo Gallery. Ships that mother seaplanes, Craft of the Hush Hush Fleet may play a part in first transatlantic flight. Popular Science Monthly, February 1919, page 80, on Google Books.